going to be showing you today is how to use UV resin to produce some great bits and pieces and jewellery. I'll also be talking about the do's and don'ts with UV resin as well. Now there's lots of different UV resins out there and some are really good and some are not so good. Now I use the J Diction UV resin. I find this to be the best one that I've used for a long long time. It cures grey and it doesn't create too many bubbles when it's curing. It doesn't also overheat when it's curing. But remember whenever you're using UV resin you should only do it in thin layers. You shouldn't do deep moulds. It's not great for large castings and things like that. So earrings and jewellery it's ideal for. There's lots of different ways that you can cure UV resin. One of the best ways to sit it outside on a really warm sunny day because actually natural sunlight cures this stuff amazingly and it never goes sticky but if you live in the UK or other places where sunshine is no guarantee there's lots of different UV torches this is just a really bog standard cheap one that takes quite a while to cure this is a one that gives a really good spread of UV light and that's a quite powerful one and this is also a very powerful UV light and it cures really well my preferred method is this or something similar it opens up it protects you from any uv light you put it whatever you're curing in there so i could get several bits in there and then you just turn it on and it gives a six minute cure time this is really designed for 3d printing for resin i use it all the time i love it and it will give that final cure as well if you've still got something that you've cured with a torch that's a little bit sticky if you want to put mica powders into uv resin then you can but you have to be careful not to make your uv resin opaque because if you do then the torch or the uv light isn't going to penetrate and you might have bits that aren't going to be cured the other thing is unless you're doing shallow really shallow molds like this you really want a transparent as possible mold so that the light can penetrate through the mold but these molds are suitable and absolutely fine for what I'm doing today. You can add glitters in there, you can also add some resin pigments as well which are designed for UV resin. Well I'm all ready now and what I find when I'm doing UV resin, actually when I find when I do any sort of resin work is I try and get myself as organized as possible so I know exactly what I'm going to be putting in to the bits that I'm going to be making. I've got my tweezers ready, I've got my resin ready, and I've got everything resi. Resi? Ready. I'm going to show you a few pieces. Earrings. I'm also going to make a little key ring. I'm also going to be using some of this epoxy and UV resin dye. And the one I've chosen is a sky blue. And that is really easy to mix up. I'm going to use it as the base or the background for these ones here. Adding the little flowers on the top of it. All I will do is pour some of this into a cup first. And then I will pop one drop in. I'll give that a whisk round and see if that has taken enough colour. And as you can see that has taken quite a bit of colour but I think one more drop should be sufficient. Now mixing in especially with UV resin is going to cause some bubbles and this is one of the things that I want to be talking about as well. I'm going to pour some of that into there just enough to cover the base and then move that around so it's fully covered. As long as you're not working in any areas that have got a windows and UV light is coming straight onto them, this isn't going to cure up until you want it to cure. I'm going to be leaving this UV resin for probably three or four minutes at least before I attempt to cure it and that is why I'm going to also pour in the base of all the other ones because I like to use UV resin in layers. You get a much better result I think, you get less bubbles and you don't get any overheating when it's curing. Now I'm using the J Diction UV resin because personally I think it's the best UV resin. I've used a lot of UV resins and this is the one that I've had the most success with. So by going through all this and just squeezing a little bit out into here you are giving yourself a nice base to work on plus you're going to give it time to release any bubbles that it may have in there before you go ahead and cure it. It is really important to make sure that you don't try and cure too much at one time because it can overheat and it can warp 
what your final finish is. UV resin is not designed to be pouring in deep layers. The thinner the layer you do it in, the quicker it will cure. Now I'm going to leave all those pieces for about five minutes. Before I do that, I am going to quickly go over. Don't spray it with alcohol. It won't give you any better a finish. All it does is get alcohol into the air and it can often create a problem with your curing as well. It may make it go bumpy and lumpy. And if there are any bubbles that it doesn't want to come up then I can encourage them to come up with my little micro stick. If you're using these micro sticks though make sure you take off the end of the little brush. You don't want the little filaments caught anywhere. Well these have been about five minutes now and it seems that most of the bubbles have come to the top. I'm just going to go over them with a lighter just in case there are any there that may I've come up that I haven't seen. And now what I'm going to do is give them a bit of a curing. This Sunloo box, and it's really easy to use. There's quite a few different ones on the market. I will link this one, it's not expensive. All you do is you open it like that, and then you pop in here what you want to cure. They've got the colour in, I'm gonna pop that in there, and then I'll pop that one in well as that one. And then all you have to do is turn it on, and you have a little box here, and I've got that set for five minutes 94, and all I need to do is turn it on. You can tell it's on because it changes colour. I like this nicely spread torch or this one which gives a really powerful light and because we haven't cast these too deep these should take no more than a couple of minutes to cure. I never show the full curing process in my videos because nobody wants to see me sitting here for a whole minute or two minutes or five minutes doing this so I normally cut to something else. That is exactly what I'm going to do now but rest assured these will have been cured for about that amount of time. These have all cured up now. Now the one of the biggest pieces of advice I can give you is always make sure you turn your torch off because the amount of times that I have not turned this torch off and then had to change the batteries in it. So always turn your torch off as soon as you've finished using it. And I'm going to do the ones with the flowers in first and I to stop them moving around all I'm going to do is just pop a little bit of UV resin underneath them. Take some tweezers and place my dried flowers in there. Remember we've got this all cured up so it's not going to affect the cure underneath now but if we would tried to do this in one go what you may have found is that the resin underneath these where the UV light didn't penetrate didn't cure. I'm going to give those a quick blast with my torch now just to cure that little bit of resin there. That stops those flowers moving around anywhere. And now I'm gonna do my final layer, which is the clear layer on top of these ones because we've already got the blue one. Squeeze gently when you're squeezing as well and keep the bottle down, nose down, towards the piece that you're doing. That way you can prevent pushing bubbles into it if you've got a constant squeeze. If you can see what I'm doing here, I'm moving it around as I'm squeezing the bottle and that way I'm less likely to push any bubbles into the corners and things. And again, I will leave these all for five minutes prior to curing them to allow any bubbles to come up. Now this one, I'm going to stick a sticker on, so I don't need to worry at all about the resin underneath. I don't have to put any on it, and then any resin that goes on top of that is not going to be blocked by anything, and as a result, that will cure up nicely. I've put that off centre, and I'd like to say that was intentional, but it wasn't. I've put that off centre because I just messed up. But never mind, I will still fill that up and still carry on. Again, pouring it in slowly. I'm going to put some fruit into my next one. I'm gonna put a bit there. And I'll just dob a little bit of UV resin. And because these are clear, if I feel that that isn't curing enough once it's going on like that, what I can do is, and because these molds are relatively clear, go from underneath, and just cure that up for a second like that. Finish these now. I've got some little fruit and some flowers in there. I'm going to cure up those little bits where I've stuck those down. These ones I'm going to use a mixture of some of this chunky glitter. I really like this chunky glitter and it should stick nicely to this anyway. I'm only going to put a few random bits in here and then what I'm also going to put in is some of these little tiny rocky things because I like these two and because we're going to dome these all up and I'm going to show you how I'm going to dome them up in a minute then it doesn't again matter if they are sticking up a little bit you do get instant gratification with UV resin that is the one thing because it's cured and ready within a, probably 10 minutes of you doing them
Once you're happy with all your placements, then you just need to fill it up with your resin. And again, a tip here is I will put a little bit of resin over each one of the gems or the stones first so it doesn't move out the way once I pour the rest in. The viscosity of the resin will stop that moving around. And then the last ones, just a sticker, but I'm going to use different butterflies on these. And these are great little stickers. And these are the sort of stickers that you can get from anywhere. They peel off. Now, these are quite opaque, and that is another advantage of having them go onto the already cured resin. One there like that. And we can make your own stickers using your Cricut or anything as well. Don't ever feel that you can't do what you want to do it's your crafting and it's your jewelry you do what makes you happy and i'm also going to put a few little bits of a glitter or something at the top of those just to give them a bit of a sparkle i'm going to finish those off fill them up let them wait for another five minutes as you can see this one's actually released all its bubbles because i've done quite a lot i'm going to pop the ones that are around the edge I'm also going to take that little hair out of there that I've got. Oh, no, it's not a hair. It's part of the twig. What <laughs> ninkle poop. These are all cured now, and they're fairly easy to get out of the mould. Look, all you do is just take them out of the mould, like that. And look how lovely and clear that is. And that is down to us not curing it up straight away and letting it sit for a few minutes to release those bubbles. Makes a big difference. And now it's easy to dome these up. All you need to do is take your resin and go over it right to the very edge as I'm doing here. Trying not to go over that edge because if you go over the edge, what will happen is the resin will continue to run and then it will find its own level and it will keep going over that edge. So go to the very edge. The surface tension of the resin itself will stop it flowing over as long as you don't over pour. And the same for the little hole where the clasp goes. Now if you do make the little hole filled up with resin, it isn't the end of the day. Because you can quickly make a little drill through that and then you can reopen that up. Have a constant pressure on this bottle so that you're constantly pouring resin out of it. And that way you're less likely to get bubbles. I'm only doming one side. I never feel there's a point in doming the back of it. I mean, if you like doming the back, then go ahead and dome it. But to me, I just think it's a bit of a waste of resin. Unless there's something sharp on the back that you particularly don't want to be touching people's skin, then there is not really any need to dome the back. Once I've let these sit for a little while, I will again cure them up and then I can show you what they look like completely finished. Well, there we go. They're all lovely and cured now. They're not at all sticky anywhere. And as you can see, they've cured up nice and clear. You would never know that it was done in two, well, three layers, including the dome. And it's got a lovely dome on it as well. And those flowers look great in there as well as my favourite little fruit bits. They would be really easy to turn into earrings. And all you would need to do is use the little holes that are already there. Look at the little butterfly. I love them. And these ones have come out just as pretty as well with a little bit of glitter in and they look great from both sides as well it's not just one side the same as those they look great from both sides as well look no sticky at all i love the uv resin by j addiction it's the only one i use now because i can guarantee that it cures up lovely every time i really enjoy using the torch that i use but more especially i think this sun Lou has transformed and when you're putting things in there, if you're curing like this, you don't only have to cure them on the round little bit. I actually fill it up quite a lot. I put stuff all the way around on the inside as well. The turntable's there for when you're making 3D models with a 3D printer that uses resin. And then it turns around against those lights and ensures they get a full cure. But actually using it like this, you get a lot more space. You can get a lot more in there. And it also still cures everything. And that's how I put them in there. So as long as you follow some simple rules with UV resin and don't try and pour it too deep and make sure that you cure it up well, you can get some great 
almost instant satisfaction with it. If you want to get hold of anything that I've used, including this box that cures up lovely, or the torch, or the resin, or the mould, I'll put links to everything in the description below. Please boot the like button if you found this video to be helpful or useful or just interesting. It really does make me smile and it helps my videos to get out there. Remember to hit that subscribe button and ensure that you check out the video that's coming up next on using epoxy resin and how to ensure that you get the best results. This is a video you don't want to miss. Take care. Enjoy your resin. Bye.